I guess that is we do have standards and specifications. We're just not required to follow them. And early we days and TCI team was being invented in the first message. RSCs are requests for comments were being made. Someone had an idea on a protocol. This is probably the first message. Anyone could post their idea. If someone had an idea on a protocol, until anyone could post their idea, and then others would comment on this idea, until in the end, the established protocol was made. The end result of this is what These we now call the TCI protocol standard framework, say by the American National Standards. These comments were never taken into a standard framework, say by the American National Standards Institute, and called standards. These announced the standard requires the following RSCs or requests for comments. These announced the standards, but they're still called RSCs or requests for comments. Just opinions. I don't think that some people think it. The idea of this is just because of this in the world of IT, we don't have design standards. We have because of this in the world of IT, we don't have design standards. We have best practices. I don't practice it security. Well, I hate that term best practice. practice. I practice that. I don't practice it security. If all networks were required to follow this standard, standards, we wouldn't have the network worries. If all networks were required to follow this standards. We wouldn't have the network worries or the massive Something I didn't give them much thought about is a physical layer of the network. Something we didn't give them much thought about is a physical layer of the network. We don't actually think about the actual physical we path of the electron the network. We don't actually think about the actual physical path of the electrons and the pulses of the light are actually following. Is a pen tester a CI all the time network that have every network device dumped into one network? Is a pen tester a CI all the time network that have every network device dumped into one network? An office environment will have office workstations, wireless access points, the cell phones, printers, cameras, all with full access to the internal networks. Sometimes you can see the DMZ has full access to the internal networks. Sometimes you can see the DMZ has full access to the internal networks. The rules are set to any any. Sure, there's a firewall in place, but the rules are set to any any. So basically, the firewall is just We have vulnerability stand from the company network to channel the credit card. Here we have Windows Ten and Windows Windows credit card servers. Pretty typical. You see Windows Seven workstations, Windows and Linux servers. See fourteen step phones. Pretty typical office network. I see all of that. Windows server. We see fourteen step phones, seven workstations, one Windows server. So we have twenty-three hosts and a SIP server running Ubuntu Linux. Note that SIP phones run Windows Seven. So we have twenty-three hosts and SIP. Note that the SIP phones are running on the Linux 2.6 kernel, kernel which everybody in this room knows it's seriously Technically, you just failed your PCI test on 14 bulb. counts of Intel Life operating system. Technically, you just failed your PCI test on 14 counts of Intel Life operating system. Here's a drawing of a typical network similar to the scan we saw. Here's a drawing of a typical network similar to the scan we saw. We saw the drawing of devices embedded in one subnet including wireless access point. This network is pen tested for if a bad guy is sitting in the parking lot. If this network is pen tested for if a bad guy is sitting in the parking lot, then it's game over. Remember, wireless is a radio, so the signal is just floating around out there waiting for anyone to pick them up. If it's wireless, it can easily be hacked by physical access to the wireless. You can't have the wire then the data without having physical access to the wire. Can't see, be seen past the Even then, the data exchange between systems can't see, be seen past the wire. The built in security in those modern ground out here in the air waiting to be passed to the Wireless, all your data is just floating around out here in the air waiting to be passed to the On this slide, we segmented the SIP phones off into their own network. And also segmented on this slide, we segmented the SIP phones off into their own network. Most corporate bank firewalls support VLANs. Most of them even have four. Most corporate bank firewalls support VLANs. In some cases, the SIP phone server may have to be mobile to give access to its web. In some cases, the SIP phone server may have to be mobile to give access to its web so that the SIP phone server may have to be mobile to give access to its web. And then have another interface based on the SIP phone network. Also note that the SIP phone network. Is on its own VLAN. Also, the only access to the wireless AP point no direct is on its own VLAN. With only access to the internet, no direct access to the internet. We've now changed our scope down to 14 hosts down to 7 in scope hosts. And we're moving the most vulnerable attack. These days, we also have everything moving to the cloud. This environment brings up new security problems. Our data is not fully under our control. This environment brings up new security problems. Our data is not fully under our control. I live in the North Georgia mountains, and there's times I'm sitting in the cloud 
Yeah. And I know that they know Georgia mountains, and there's sure. times I'm maybe sitting maybe you can see, the cloud you can't see things on my clearly. front porch. Clouds. Sure, <laughs> maybe you can see that you can't see things clearly in the clouds. clouds. But does this obscurity really is security to the objects in the cloud? Who came up with this stupid term anyway? Well, maybe a little bit, not much. The sun invented the concept of slaving system. Who came up with this stupid term anyway? To act as one. The sun invented the concept of slaving systems together. A better term. To act as one. They call it distributed Most likely some marketing L user. A much better term. It's all a schematic of a network layout. Most likely some marketing L user. That's it's all a schematic of a network when layout. When a vacuum cloud on the drawing represents the actual internet network, and not when a vacuum cloud on the drawing represents the actual internet network, are big and fluffy and not every computer is acting as one. It can easily be passed. Clouds are big and fluffy and have no defined shape. The cloud in the drawing it can easily be passed through the network, which is big and fluffy. The cloud in the drawing represents the internet backbone network, because which is big and fluffy. And has no defined shape. Everybody in this because room should know routes are dynamic. already and understand that critical data. Everybody in this room should know must be already and understand and that critical data that passes data through this area must be a transmission. And you have no control so over the data if AWS this is a area of transmission. Then it is so insecure. If AWS is a cloud, then it is, is a this a good insecure, undefined space in the network. So, Most security testing like PCI yeah. requires physical audits of the physical system. Most security testing like PCI requires How do you physical, perform audits physical audits of the system? systems when you have no so, physical access to the system? How do you perform physical audits of the system really know that it's when you have no physical secure? access to the system? How do you know that there isn't some hard How do you really know that it's physically secure? How do you know that there isn't some How do you know for certain the hosting provider is selling your data? We're handing it over to some. How do you know for certain the hosting provider is it's selling your data? I mentioned earlier about companies being so big they get away with writing their own rules. I mentioned earlier about companies being so big they get away with writing their own rules. They've written their own rules. AWS is one of these companies. IP addresses. They've written their own rules. I haven't read the routing standards. The last thing I've the early 70s, I even worked on routing standards. I haven't read the routing standards. And in the early 70s, I even worked on routing standards. We have dynamic IP addressing. And there's no such thing. But sure, there is we have no dynamic IP addresses in the ACP. IP addresses are not rubber but bands. There is no elastic. They don't hold up your underwear. IP addresses are I've seen a lot of bands. AWS internal they networks designed with public addresses. I've seen a lot of AWS internal networks designed with public addresses, designed with really public addresses inside the internal networks. Now, yes, there are really cloud, cloud providers that don't make up their own rules. Like our now, yes, there are cloud providers that don't make up their own rules. Like our All friends here at the conference line. Design. I do know internal that these people follow really internet standards of their design. Internal so networks you are really are internal and non-routable. Choose a company. So, follows if you are do need to use a cloud provider, choose a company that Once we're working the rules. as a compliance analyst on a very large corporate network, once we're working as a compliance analyst on a very large corporate, network, a network, very large corporate network. I was given a job to poke around and check the internal routing of the data center. Documentation. But poking around using Nmap, I found, I found a subnet that was not in documentation. And there was a lot of systems on it. And I found out this network, and there was a lot of systems on it. But more poking around, I found out this network was full of PL supervisors. And this network was the first hop Further inside the internal network of the public network. Further investigation found that PL supervisors control the HVAC Further the investigation found these PLC devices the temperature control the HVAC of the data center. After I can easily the see the temperature in different PLC. areas of the data center. Yes, they're happy to give you their model. After looking at the documentation on the PLCs, I found that the yes, they're happy to give you their model. I found that the devices had no login, and I did have full control over the devices. I found that the devices had no login, and I did have full control over the devices. Times. To use these only now, the documentation plainly states several times to use these only on an isolated network. I reported my findings but the conference these weren't very isolated. Silence. I reported my findings on conference call and there was a long Come to find silence. Come to find out the HVAC network was the first network that was wired and made hot when they were Come to find out the HVAC network was the first network that was wired and made hot when they were building the data center. Run through this During the data build out, the data center's backbone was run through this network switch, you know, just well, the testing. Well, after the DC was built out, and everyone forgot about this temporary connection. Well, the after the DC was built out, everyone forgot about this temporary connection of the HDC network. 
Just think about what happened to the temperature up to 120 degrees in the day. The level of control I have, I can easily tell this command and control server that it's still 62 degrees inside the data center. While causing the Iranian style meltdown. I'm sure some of y'all have been in data centers with the HVAC remember failed. You know what I missed yep. that. They came in through the HVAC command. And remember control. the target pack? Yep. They the came in through the HVAC the command and control server. And then moved laterally through the rest of the network, even up to the point of sales devices in some of the stores. Now, this wasn't the only infrastructure the problem? problem they had. Now, this company was big now, on this. This wasn't the only infrastructure the problem they had. Now, this company was big on acquisitions. As a matter of fact, they didn't make any they would buy what they call what they call product. products. They would no thought that the product lives on They would buy up what they call a product. With no thought that the product lives on a massive network of servers and systems. And that this network would need to be merged into the existing network. You know, it's green on a computer or to the higher ups, these are just shiny new products. You know, it's you can green tell on from a computer the mess and that after that. Is in that no network or systems you can tell from the acquired mess that the network is in that no network or systems or security network engineers are ever consulted during any of these mergers. The poor network engineers were expected to get internal networks talking, sometimes when the new network was using the same address space as some existing part of the network. Also, no real money. Sorry, Mr. Manager, it just don't work like that. This new network was just Also, no real money was ever allocated to the move. And this new network is just shoved in a place and made to just work. So you end up with a network. Never mind security, just get things talking. So you end up with a network with 400,000 nodes, basically on One day the PCI network. assessor ran a scan on the 10-8 uh, network. One day the PCI assessor ran a scan, oh, scan on the 10-8 network. And oh, look at all the hosts found. Over 400,000 hosts. They ran a ping scan found it. So the fix was to turn yeah. ICMP packets off. Yeah, hide the, the mess routers. under the rug, dude. Well, yeah. of course, a good assessor. Yeah, hide the, the mess under the rug, dude. The well, hosting. of course, a good assessor yes. ran a simple fork scan, and there were the host again. Yes, a good assessor so looks under the rug. The next man. month, Myself and another analyst work with six network people. So, the, the next month, myself and another analyst work with six network people to segment off the network properly. Uh, but, of course, properly, there were no wiring uh, schematics, and properly. we were told we weren't allowed to shit. But, of course, there were no wiring schematics, so, and we were told we weren't allowed to shit anything down. Something off for a few minutes. So, how do you move a wiring switch without shitting something off for a few minutes? Yeah. Yarn, I don't know. Yarn. So yeah. the decision Yard. was made to put in a network access control system. To so the decision was made to put in a network access control system to later. mitigate the system. A new NAC was installed in the Two agents. Two months and a half billion dollars later, clients. a new NAC was now installed the and the agents NAC pushed out will remain network NAC. clients. Now the maker of this NAC was designed for a Windows only network. was designed for a Windows only network. And a client must be installed, which is a Windows only application, in order to get an IP address and then connect to the network. Then ACLs are given to the individual clients to control which networks they can reach. After it was all up and running, myself and another analyst with pen testing skills got called to the VP. After it was all up and running, myself and another analyst with pen testing skills got called to the VP of the network security office. He wanted us to hack this new system by any means necessary. Now, he had confidence in this new system and got us to hack it, saying, it will take as long time to read up on the system and find any flaws as there was any flaws. And even if it took us a week, if we did another week, he'd be happy to get us to make a week. We noticed so on Monday, we didn't sit around and read the manuals and the docs. We noticed that everything was based on this client. So, how do you know where we're on time? Windows only. Now, we all know that there is no such thing as a Windows only network. Sure, the workstations, laptops, and servers may be running Windows. What about printers? 
So we're going yeah, to what about the SIP phones? The clients can't yeah. be installed on the segmentation the here, just plug into an empty yeah. wall. What about the SIP phones? Yep. Yeah. No segmentation here. Well, just this plug system uses white blast whitelisting of MAC addresses to the printers. Well, the system uses white blast whitelisting of MAC addresses to the printers and the SIP phones to allow them access to the network. Not only to the office network, but also talking also talking about a hacker. With a pesky road. Now the marketing material also talked about a hacker with a pesky road oh, Linux machine. Can. Cannot connect to this network. Oh, Target. I shouldn't have said that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so Target Linux is the Target Linux machine. 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 Target Linux this company was really so strict about the software you would have on your laptops. But one of the things we had was that we had a lot of applications, along with a virtual box, which we had loaded along with a VM and a Cali box on a virtual NATI network behind the company. So, by putting the Cali box on the virtual NATI network behind the company lock laptop, we can now see and touch the internal networks, the data center networks, and Cali and all those wonderful tools. We've already made marketing a liar. Hmm. And access 45 minutes into the day, and we've already made marketing a liar, and access the unaccessible network. Well, that was easy, but this was supposed to say, say I cheated. <laughs> well, that was easy, but some of us can say, I cheated. Because we were using the company laptop, we still the client installed, so do a man in the middle attack. And we still have four days of us, so let's try something else. I brought along my else. pineapple, such a marvelous and dangerous, dangerous little tool. I brought along my pineapple, such a marvelous and dangerous, dangerous little tool. The pineapple is a small Wi-Fi hacking device, but it runs Linux, and it's on well, open hardware. The pineapple is a small Wi-Fi hacking device, well, this is the old it runs room. Linux, here. and it's on I open hardware. hardware. The newer model is even smaller. So this is the older model here that I used in the pack. The newer model is even smaller. And yes, it was designed for Wi-Fi hacking, but it's a Linux box. And yes, it was designed for Wi-Fi hacking, but it's a Linux box. And it's on open hardware, so if you know Linux, you can make this little box do all kind of tricks. And I'm going to do a little bit about Linux here. Matter of fact, somebody was talking to me outside about that. Now they're installing a little paranoia here. You know how day, fact, somebody was talking to me nowadays outside everybody about carries this. a backpack. I mean, look around this room. You know how every day, nowadays, everybody so carries a backpack. I mean, look around this room and see how many backpacks now, you see. Here's a little backpack of mine. So much that we don't even notice so that they carry walk around. Now, uh, here's a little backpack of mine. And send the day this, I could walk around auto running everything in range and send the day back to my road so it would use a cell network. On this, this battery pack, pack will run for two days without recharge. On this particular hack, I think you use the corporate network and cell phone jack for internet access. But yeah, think about somebody carrying this background inside your business. Yes, all the inside is a great place to hide. Network I was talking about? You know them ones that Remember all them cell phones in the same network I was talking about? You know the ones that manage. You know them ones that's too much of a problem to properly say. Well, this was Jim. You know the ones that manage and say, what a problem. Well, this was Jim and the fourth people were going on vacation. So a little walk around the target area, and there we had it. An empty cube with a calendar that said the person that would be gone on vacation for the rest of the week. And a ton of stuff so I sat down at the desk, pulled up the desk, and picked it up and copied down the MAC address. So I sat down at the desk, pulled up the zip phone config file, copied down the MAC address, plugged up the pineapple, the speech's address, I got a network unplugged the phone, plugged up the pineapple, and magic. I got a network connection with full internet access, and full access to the internal networks in the data center. Now, a little security. The back was now fully compromised. All these people say, oh, now, I don't have anything to hide. I don't care you know, if all, all these people say, oh, I don't have anything to hide. I don't care if this employee had the broadcast of the fact that she was gone on vacation this time. If this employee had the broadcast of the fact that she was gone on vacation this time, would this attack been this easy? Now, to show how yeah. really bad this was, we went out into the parking lot, and I wish I could show this. Now, to show how really bad this was, we went out into the parking lot, and I wish I could show this. I fired up my calendar laptop, set it on top of my Jeep, and connected to the pineapple, and fired up my calendar laptop, set it on top of my Jeep, and connected to the pineapple, and took photos of the laptop, scanning 
The data center is most familiar with the, the building in the background. And this rogue lie. We left this pineapple in place for the rest of the week. And we and didn't drive by the SSID and the ISS point that we plugged it up and went out. And we didn't drive by the SSID or anything. We just plugged it up and let it go. And we also found that there was a bunch of phones using this thing for the Wi-Fi connection. It could have easily hacked these phones. The target area of this building. Oh, it gets worse. 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 It no one allowed except yes, we were supposed to be in this area for this test. And and we ran around in this area. Yes, we were supposed to be in this area for this test. For a week. But we ran around in this area, sat in the queue, and worked for a week. Sure. And nobody ever questioned what we were doing. Sure, we really did work there, and we were authorized to be in that part of the building. Sure, we were authorized to be in that part of the building. And still, we could have been in it. We even wore badges with the blank side turned out and tailgated it to the building every day. Yeah, simple you don't security need great social engineering is, skills if nobody ever asks you a question or nobody ever pays you. You don't need great social engineering skills if nobody ever asks you a question or nobody ever pays yep. you. Yep, epic fail. Half a million dollars spent, the problem still exists. Yep, epic fail. Half a million dollars spent, the problem still exists. Security should always be taken in a layered approach. Remember, any in this security should be taken in a layered approach. Can be Remember, any, and this is true. Any system or network can be Remember, breached. Remember, this is true. Any system or network can be breached. The good trick to good security, security is, is to make it hard as possible to reach the core data. The good trick to good security, the security, 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 security is, is to make it hard as possible to reach the core data. The pen tester runs out of time. So the bad guy goes somewhere else where the fruit is lower hanging. We talked about the pen tester runs out of time on the project. The next layer to your network. We talked about the physical side of the network. The next layer of your network security is your firewall and network rule monitor. Rule says is your primary control of your good, network. A good firewall with good rule rule says is your primary control of your network. No matter what firewall you use, the firewall is only as good as it costs. The rule says are set. No matter what firewall you use, no matter how much it costs, if the rule says are set to any any, you might as well look it out of the network and buy yourself a cheap route. This complexity. Yes, rule sets are complicated, it takes time but it's, it's complexity which gives it, it takes its power. To learn about sure, it takes time to properly set up rule sets. It takes time to learn about rule sets. Network monitoring is worth it. Network monitoring is a much neglected network service. Network monitoring. Most security network monitoring is a much neglected service. Most security requirements require that network monitoring be in place. I find that it's in but place. Too many times, matter of fact, most of the time, that the service I find that it's in place, but it's so misconfigured network mar monitoring that the service is completely very useless. And very difficult True. To network mar monitoring is very now, complex and set very up difficult to set up, especially the first time. If the service but is set up to log everything, it runs itself. Needle, very if huge. the service is set up to log everything, you end up looking for one particular target needle in a very people. huge pile of needles. When they were hacked, the hacks were this actually logged by the target or Home Depot. When they were hacked, the hacks were actually logged by the tripwire service, and the alerts was turned off. So the hacks were logged. The system was logging so much garbage that the alerts was turned off. So the hacks were logged, but nobody saw this until after the horse left the barn. Take time to set up your network monitor and write and turn on patching. alerts. What can else can I say that hadn't already been said about updates? And Proper patching. Use what can else can I say that hadn't already been said about updates and patching? Over 70% of the successful network hacks that I do are on Over 70% of the successful network hacks that I do are on unpatched systems you have software that lead to the hacking patch. of the patch systems. Software. If you have software that can't handle the patch, it's the software. No single application is worth having your whole domain. If you have that Windows room. 2003 server, which is Linux. If you have that Windows 2003 server, run a bit app software, then replace the effective software. Don't have to worry about. Run a bit app software, then replace the effective software. Ask yourself, is this one application worth having my whole network pillaged and plundered? Ask yourself, is this one application worth having my whole network pillaged and plundered? And this is actual screenshot. This is a Windows 2000. Security detected on it. But this has actually happened. This is a Windows 2003 machine that I popped in less than five minutes and then ended up owning everything in the network beyond me. As you can see, first I got it with Eternal Blue, and then with the Creds I used the PS, EXE, C, 
module to get in the rest of the machines with the grids. Here's a screenshot of Regent Project. This server hadn't been updated. This is the Regent Project. 2008. This server hadn't been updated since 2015. But it's 2008 server. They should be able to get patches. But this is the end of patches in 2015. Using the internal blue pack brought to us by our friends at the NSA, and using the capture probes from this machine, and then using the Metasploit Provincial Domino module, in just a few hours, I have owned and loaded 387 machines, including the network domain controllers. And the, servers are the sad part is that the rest of this network is pretty well updated, and the servers are running either server 2012 or 2016. This one server brought the biggest the whole problem thing down. On networks and the easiest thing to hack, which now the biggest problem I see on networks and the easiest thing to hack, which really doesn't do much good talking to the people in this crowd NTL because we're Linux users. And so this is a remember those substandard thing. proprietary protocols by vendors. Which remember those substandard proprietary protocols made up by NTLM. vendors, which are not internet standards. NTLM is part of the Here's NetBIOS the name server. NTLM is designed for small NTLM offices. NTLM is part of the NetBIOS name service. It was designed for small offices in mind. Where computers are friendly. And it was the same operating system. And the network is closed off from the rest of the world. A real land. A network like this, NTLM is not connected to the public network in any way. A network like this, NTLM is not really an issue that works quite well. And no, NTLM may run on TCP IP, but it is not part of the TCP IP protocol suite. It is not an open standard. CIFS is part of the suite, but SMB and NTLM are Microsoft proprietary standards. NTLM comes from the days of NT. It's still in Most Windows. of you young people in here probably never even because seen this Windows 2000 yet, Active it's still in Windows. For authentication. Because ever since Windows 2000, Active Directory has been now, used for authentication of Windows domains. Open protocols. Now, Active Directory uses a combination of open, open protocols, Herbos 5 for encryption, LDAP for directory service, and DNS for protocols. Now, of course, Microsoft broke these still, open these three protocols, protocols just a little bit like protocols and used but Still, these three protocols are TCP, UDP protocols, and used point-to-point -to -point communications uses between the client and the server. Yes. NTLM uses ARC broadcast. NTLM it sends yes. Your user, your when you go to log in using NTLM, it sends your user, your user name and your credentials to every machine on the network. Well, when a problems. user goes to connect to a service using a computer name, Window looks. Well, when a user goes to connect to a service using a computer name, Window looks file the DNS find the IP address first of this local host file. Well, you might ask the NetBIOS name service. Well, you might ask if the NetBIOS name service is the last one. How does it get past DNS? Well, you might ask if the NetBIOS name service is the last one. How does it get past DNS? Well, by design. Well, the system likes to use the short machine. Windows may use DNS for what they want. But the system still likes to use the short machine name or the NetBIOS name instead of DNS. So, it'll go and downplay itself to and so that has an NTLM packet and an ARC broadcast. So, and this has your user name and credentials in it. So, anyone passing this list on the network with a packet sniffer or a large short can easily capture these credentials. And we want it spoofing, and these credentials start popping up all over the network. And then, Yes, cracking into your own patches is child's play. And also another thing that, that you can't do in Linux that you can do in Windows that they have what's called what you can do is pass the hash attack. Hash, you can put it in something like which, a DSC. What you can do is once you get a user name and hash, you can put it in something like a PS, EXE module, and it will pass the hash attack. And you don't even need to know the password all you need to do is put the hash in there and it will send you a user name and hash and log you in. You must have the password to log in. Linux machines, no matter what service it is, you must have a password to log in. You can't attach to an SSH service using a hash. You have to have a password. NTLM basically is like screaming your username 
and password across the board. ETLM basically is like spreading your using AD username and, DNS and password and across a private room. Between two people. We're using AD and DNS as like a quiet, quiet conversation between two people. Users. It's true that the chain is as strong as its weakest link. Users. It's true that the chain is as strong as its weakest link. And it can be defeated by one idiot. You can throw a billion dollars in security, and it can be defeated by this one idiot. This is the hardest security or disgruntled employee. They say you can't fix. This is the hardest security layer. Bad week and default passwords. They say you can't fix these breaches. Bad week and default passwords do lead to major breaches. Yes, this is one of the first it's things I looked for. You've got password. a router running? Yes, I've tried running Cisco Cisco on it because that's a default password. And a lot of times you find that the higher level people, people in the company are the ones that violate this rule. And a lot of times you find that the higher yes, level the people in the company are the ones that violate this rule the most. And then set his own yes, the CTO will spend millions of dollars on internet security and then set his own password to it. password I'm one. I think I'm joking when I say that. This yes. is true. I've seen it. I mean, I think I'm joking when I say that. But yes, I saw a CTO that did that. And we cleaned his cloud. Remember the chairman of DNC's one. Yahoo account got hacked? Yep. His Remember the chairman of DNC's Yahoo account got hacked? He deserved to have his own yep. email. His password was a password. Let's just blame he it on the Russians. He deserved to have his email spread. I've read every research it. paper put out about Let's the Russians. Let's just blame it on the Russians. And I have yet to see yeah, one. I've read every research, research paper put out about Russian the Russian hacking. Actually, and I have yet to see one clear piece of evidence that points to the Russians. People who use passwords. Actually, what I see is an inside job. of all their electronic devices. People who use passwords as a password should be stripped of all their electronic devices and not allowed to use anything but a rotary telephone. Then, there's broken security by the vendor. Now I'm a big then, there's broken security by the vendor. You know, now I'm a big you know, promoter of two-factor authentication. Yes. Two-factor You know, off. something you know, something you have. Password attacks. Yes. Two-factor auth does eliminate most password attacks. Yep. You can but disable what's wrong with this picture? the secure code for seven days. Yep. You can disable. You can also let your browser be allowed to code for seven days. Log in. You can also let the browser be allowed to allow access without a login. For seven days. Uh, sure, you have to your ID in place, but it is disabled over seven days. But hey, you can put that check mark down on your security audit that you have two-factor on. Maybe it's maybe you disabled most of the time. Once you're doing a security audit database. That contained once, it, once, once doing a security audit in the database that contained, I'm sure some of you people in I found that I could connect to the data database with my laptop. I name the bank, no. but I found that I could connect to the database with my laptop and the network. Now this database is supposed to be protected by an impervious yeah, database firewall, which I'm sure some of you all are familiar with. Myself and another analyst and was working on a project for the config file and found that Myself and another analyst working on a project as for the config file and found that, that, that yes, and probably was up and running, logging, but the config file showed you some test traffic. Like in other like words, like it was logging, but it wasn't stopping any bad traffic like me connecting. The reply was, we haven't heard of it. Now, we had a conference call with the business the reply was, we haven't heard of it. Well, yeah, you yeah, haven't heard of this in test mode. But, but, but we, we, we haven't heard of it. But it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. But we haven't heard of it. Well, after 30 minutes of this, I still don't think the manager caught on and did it. Well, remember, your, your business these days isn't a building or desk and chairs. Employees. Remember, your, your business the these days isn't a building or desk and chairs. Employees. Exists. Sometimes the very product, the product that you sell, your, your very business lives, and exists. Sometimes the very product you're selling, and your very livelihood is ones and zeros on the computer system somewhere. But look at it as a very Don't look at one that's built on IT and IT security Don't follow as this best loss, but look at it as a very bad Follow asset. international standards and protocols. Don't follow best practices. Don't practice at security. But follow international standards and protocols. Remember, practicing is for Don't practice at security. Perform security. Remember, practicing is for rookies. Well, no. Professional thank perform security. Thank Linux Self for having me here today and thank my Employer well, no. thank compliance point. Thank you for having me here today and thank my and employer questions. compliance point for supporting me being here today. And any questions? No questions. Uh,
Oh, what? What do you think of uh, WPA3 that's supposed to have what was that again? private public key pairs for each host? WPA3? What was that again? I mean, you can still run an auth attack against it. WPA3? Get your hash. And mm, you can, also you can still run an auth attack against it and get, get your hash. And then you can also pass your hash to wireless. Any other questions? Any other questions? Huh? Are you saying resistance is futile? Huh? Are you saying resistance is futile? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> are you saying resistance is futile? Make it as hard as you can. No, I'm not saying uh, resistance is futile. Will. What I'm saying is, is make it as hard as you can for the bad no, guy. And that way he will. He'll go away. Because, you know, if, especially if you're a low rent hacker, you're not going to spend a lot of time trying to hack some company that's going to take you the month to get in. You're going to go to the server. Because in this country, there is lower, there is low hanging fruit everywhere. Now, over in Europe, I'll have to say those people over there do a lot. I do a lot of testing in Europe, and those people do a whole yeah. lot better job of protecting. Telling the truth, that I'm right. Any but, system can yeah, be hacked. Yeah, I mean, I'm it's just a matter of time. Telling the truth, that I'm right. Any system can be hacked. It's just a matter of time and money. If you've got enough money, you can bring it down. Yeah. I'm sorry you work in a hospital. That's good. Because uh, let me tell you, every time I see a hospital on my phone, let me tell you, every time I see a hospital on my phone, pop up in my email for a project I got to go to, I know it's going to be a real long night of owning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the one of the problems with a lot of like hip. Now, yeah, one of the, not this way. the problems with a lot of PCI like hip testing. Now PCI is not this way, but PCI, if you don't pass your PCI testing, then you can't take HIPAA. credit card data. Yeah, they've credit got card standards, they're actually really good standards that they follow them. With HIPAA, nobody yeah, they've got standards, and they're actually really good standards that they follow them, but there's nobody that comes back and says, okay, hospital. You can no longer you know, take patients. You know, Joe's hospital. And so you failed yeah, your hospital, so you can no longer take all patients. But I've done hip and so yeah, they do hip I do hip testing all the time. But I've done hip testing on hospital networks and then went back the next year and the domain administrator's password is still password. Yes. And this is in a major hospital in a major city. Yes, I fell out of my chair and I hit the domain controller with RDP desktop. It just for giggles said administrator password and all of a sudden loading user profile. Now let me tell you what I did there. I I ended up scheduling. Now let me tell you what I did there. I I ended up scheduling Fred Flintstone in room 232 or something. <laughs> Male, 40 years old, and scheduled him for surgery the next day for a hysterectomy. What I'm saying here is it's like with Equifax. Yeah, and I read the research papers on that. And I read the research papers on that. That was a four year old Apache, Apache Struts vulnerability that they hit yeah. that machine with the CEO and got everybody's reference. Now, the CEO of Equifax ended up blaming it on the system's admin. I read a blog somewhere that was put out by the system's admin. That he had been complaining, I've seen this happen. 
patch it. Or the system's admins know that there's a security problem, but man, you don't want to let them patch it because they're afraid they're going to break something. And that's what happened to Equifax. What I'm saying is that it should be that, especially in cases of massive hack like Equifax, and people's data is going after it, that CEO needs to go to jail for five or ten years. That's what I'm saying. Not the systems admin, but the owner of the company needs to go to jail. Then we can start seeing better networks. Yeah. Actually, I think the best approach is yes, developers should be trained in security. Actually, I think the best approach is yes, developers should be really it's trained this way in security because I know a lot of developers trade. and really it's this way of any trade you get tunnel vision in your trade. Right? The coders, they're just looking at the code and they don't think about something outside the code. I don't think that that's a good, good idea. But, and like the term DevOps, I don't think that that's a good good idea. You should have developers and you should have operators. Because you're either a good developer or a good systems engineer. You really can't be both because things change so much you can't stay up with the latest stuff. Yeah. I'll go further. So the most vulnerable language is C. Huh? The most vulnerable language is C. If you program in C, there's an extraordinary high likelihood that that program is going to be hacked. If you program in Python, there is an extraordinarily low chance that that's going to be hacked because it's not that happening. So if you use C, you need yes, to be Python. You should play with Python. Agree or not agree? Yes, I agree. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about PCI compliance. Would you say it would be a good policy to, okay, so your PCI compliant systems need to be in their own network subnet. But if you have it in a secure network subnet with other secure servers that aren't necessarily doing PCI work, they need to be PCI compliant because PCI compliance is like citrus canker. Um, if you have, if someone has it, everyone that within 500 miles just has to be killed. Um, would you say it would be a good idea to have a PCI compliant secure zone you could separate do it that from you could make sure a non PCI compliant secure zone? PCI zone? You could either do it that way or you could make sure that the other servers that are in that PCI zone are also secure. Because, yes, in, in the PCI environment, that network, if I'm in that network, like a lot of times I go to the data center and they let me plug in or we put a jump box in there, so I'm already in the internal network to check. Any machine I can touch in there comes over PCI, even if it's the web server or the company website. So, in order to, you know, like I was talking about, you know, lowering the host in your scope, so yeah, you put your you put your web server in another network. Best way is to have all that way it doesn't come under compliance issue. And you're right. Best way is to have all your PCI machines in one network, firewalled off, and maybe have a jump box that's actually got access to it. So that the only thing I see when I get in the say the corporate network is, is I may see your MSSQL server running. But the only thing I see is the MSSQL for open. And if you've got it locked down, you've got it properly updated, and you've got a complex password on it, I'm not going to get in it. Not in the time of the project. Yeah, what I'm saying is we have secure servers. Well, I work for a county government down in Florida. We have secure servers, and then we have our PCI compliant servers. But right now we have them all mishmashed together in the secure zone. Yeah. So even the ones that aren't doing PCI stuff have to be PCI. Yeah. Would it be a good idea to sit, generate a second parallel secure zone that is, has no PCI servers in it, keep all the PCI servers in one side, yeah. and the other that needs to be secure you're rolling, you're in that one firewall box the same we style? Yeah. Because that way you're lowering, you're lowering your count of hosts. The least host you got, the more you're not going to get it. Because like I was talking about, a lot of times I go to one machine and get in it. And then from there, I move laterally to the other machine. So, if you've got your PCI only machines, which I'm gonna, that's the ones I need to test, and I can't actually see the other ones, 
then they're out of scope and they're not my concern. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Do you have yes. Other for to There's a real good book out, and it's on his second oh, edition yes. called Window at Cali Linux. There's a real good book out, and it's on his second edition called oh, Window at Cali Linux Windows Testing. <laughs> and He's I good, know yeah. the author real well. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. Uh, I've heard a lot about it. The company I work for, and personally, I don't. Uh, do I've testing. heard a lot about it. The company I work for, and personally, I don't do any testing for the DOD or government services. I don't believe in the things I am a that go into the American people. Used to be in the Navy. Uh, I am a patriot, and one time I took out, I was used to be in the Navy, and I took an oath to defend the people of the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. And I feel, I feel that I'm still getting true and held to that oath. And the stuff that I see nowadays, the NSA doing, it's they are the domestic enemy of the American people nowadays. Sorry if any of y'all work for me. That's my. Yes, opinion. I've been approached by the government. Yeah. And Sorry if you don't have the headhunter call. Yes, I've been approached by the government. I have the headhunter head head call me about working for the government. I asked him, do you want another Red Stove? <laughs> yes, people call him a traitor. He's my hero. In my mind, he is a patriot. And I really and yes, people call him a traitor, but in my mind, he is a patriot. And I really wish that people would take their own personal security more you know, those more serious, and really read those documents that he released. Because those documents, if you sit down, and it's two gigs worth of documents, but if you sit down and you read them, and you know anything about internet security, it will scare, I mean, it scares me to death. And I'll tell you that, in, in 2007, I was the chief of network security in several data centers that I really can't name in Atlanta. Just moved in this new data center. And uh, one of the data centers we were in, we just moved in this new yeah. data center. We had the one first two rows of servers network in the data center. Yeah, Yahoo's moving and in. And one day the <laughs> senior network engineer told us, yeah, Yahoo's moving in here. They just got the subcontract on AT&T Mail, and so they're going to be using the rest of this, this hall to put in the so expansion of the Yahoo Mail for AT&T. Oh, cool. Their guys are in there. So Acclamini shows up, and they were doing the hardware, and their guys are in there, and we're talking they for tell months. Well, we're out here. We're in test mode. Of course, we're eating lunch. We'll see you on the next one. One day, tell me, well, we're out here. We're in test mode. Well, we'll see you on the next one. Shut some stuff down. And then I went up to the data center one night about 12.30, and had to shut some stuff down. It's only going to be there about 15 minutes. I walk in the door. I come in the door hollering, get out of here. All of a sudden, two guys with guns come running. Oh, wait a minute, what the hell is going on? I come in the door hollering, get out of here, get out of here. I can't be in here right now. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, what the hell is going on? You can't be in here. And the guy says, you can't be in here right now. I said, I work here. I said, I've got permission. Well, you can't be in here. You can't be in here right now. One of them put his hand on me. I work here. I said, I've got permission to be here. Well, you can't be in here right now. One of them put his hand on me. I said, who are you? guys put his hand on me. I said, we don't have to tell you who you are. We're telling you to get the hell out of here. I immediately unsaid my guns. One of the guys put his hand on my gun. And I immediately unzip my coat and put my hand Edward on my gun. It was fixing to drop. And the network engineer saw all this stuff happening on the camera. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Came running from the control room and jumped in between me and the guy going, wait a minute, wait a minute, he really does work. Who in the hell are you? And they tell me that uh, I can't be in there while they're in there. And I were well, who in the hell are you? That I can't be in here. I said, I'm in here with the Acomani guys and the Yahoo guys all day. Well, you just can't be in here. I said, I'm going to go back here and do my work. Finally, I just said, look, screw it. I got work to do, man. I said, I'm going to go back here and do my work. And if you want to try to shoot me in the back, go ahead. So I pushed past it and went back there. Watch Netflix. Did my little work. And then I plugged into the internet and started watching Netflix. While they sit in the break room, staring at me very bad. Because they couldn't open up their little boxes. Engineer sees me on the camera. Well, a couple of days later, I'm down there, and the senior engineer sees me on the cameras. And so he comes over, and well, I know I'm supposed to keep this family friendly. He comes up to me, says, Bo, where's your wheelbarrow? He comes up to me, he says, Bo, where's your wheelbarrow? 
What are you talking about? What are you talking about? He says, Do you know who you fronted on? You almost pulled a gun on me the other night? What? I said, No. Man, it was the NSA. Man, it was the NSA. What? He said, yeah, man, it was the NSA. He pulls me over yeah, behind some kids. He said, do you see them two boxes over there? I said, yeah. He said, those were NSA harvesting. There's a camera on the wall. And you're kidding. Oh, yeah. No. That's not her camera. And he said, do you see the new camera on the wall? And I went, like, yeah. yeah. That's he went, yeah, that's not her camera. <laughs> oh. He says, yeah, that's going to the NSA listening post. But, oh. One day I got to look at so, and I got to, and like I'd help this senior engineer. Work one day I got to look at him, and I got to, and like I'd help this senior engineer work with the border route. One day I get to trace all the fiber in the and you know, I go room in there, and I get to trace in our fiber. One day I get to trace all the fiber in the border route room in there, and I get to trace in our fiber, and I see it go inside the border router cabinet, and I see every piece of fiber going directly into these harvesting nodes. So I went up and I said, Chris, I got a question. Yeah. Like is our data going through the note well, harvesting nodes? And he looks down at the floor so like this. So you're saying my data is going through the I can't tell you that. What I'm telling you is I can't tell you that. So you're saying my data is going through the nodes. No, no, no. What I'm telling you is I can't tell you that your data, whether your and data is going my through boss, there or not. And we were out of that data center about a month later. And I went to my boss, and we were out of that data center about a month later. Most of our clients. Because my boss. Boss believes in security. <laughs> Most of our clients at that time I mean, were doctors, hospitals, and lawyers. You know, I, I, the way I look at security, and I mean, that's personal that's information. That, I'm not you know, I, I, the way I look at security is, when is a company. A slide, I'm not working for company X, Y, Z. When I test security on a site, I'm testing for everybody in this room. You go online. And PCI, I'm making sure that when you go to a website. And you go online and you stick your credit card data in there. It's my job to make sure it's secure. And I make those companies make sure that it's secure. What it is, basically, PCI forces them into this. Secure so, sites. But let me tell you something. The most secure sites on the internet today are adult sites and adult toy store sites. Not banks, not hospitals. The porn. <laughs> you mentioned Cali Linux and you mentioned uh, Hack 5, uh, Wi Fi by Apple. Well, actually, Hack 5 makes a lot of things. Not only did it make a pineapple. Well, actually, Hack 5 makes a lot of various little tools. Not only did it make a pineapple. Yeah. And make a thing called a bash bunny, which. Yeah. This works on any system. And this works on any system. This is a bash button. Looks like a Wi Fi thing. This is a bash button. This is Looks a full like Linux Looks like a Wi Fi thing. thing. It's got business. This is a full Linux box. Linux this thing's got a little switch. What you can do it's is got the switch for programming. This thing's got a little got switch. What you can do is the upper switch is for programming. Put two payloads on. And it's got two nodes on here that you can put a payload Let's say in I go in an office and Put two payloads on and change them to switch switches. Put a Mac Let's say I go in an office and they're running Macs and Windows. And put a Mac exploit on one switch and Windows exploit on another switch. I can walk up, even if your machine is locked, or as long as it's on, I can walk up, plug this thing in, and in less than 30 seconds, I can have it overcred all over the machine. Whether it be Mac, Linux, or Windows. This can also be used to put a rope, uh, put a payload on there and make a persistent connection to uh, a rope server somewhere. This is the tool. This little bash button is really one of the most dangerous tools. I mean, this is the tool used to see on.